Because we're very shortly going to have Cork City boss Neil Finn on just before we get to that. Uh, tickets are on sale for one of the biggest raffles uh, ever run in Ireland. Tickets would cost €100, Euro, but the top prize is an apartment worth 300 grand, which must mean um, some sort of um, gate in Dublin 6 or maybe maybe a, a toilet or something like that. But uh, hopefully it's actually a house. This is a cross-code initiative involving Cork City FC, Douglas and Kinsale AFC with funds being distributed equally. Uh, the final few weeks to enter the draw, you can get your tickets on winagaff.ie. Um, it's a good promotion. Gaff with two Fs. Neil Fenn actually might know where the house is. Neil, where is this 300 grand house? Oh, it's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful house in in right in Cork City Centre. So it's a lovely part of the lovely part of the city called Ballin Temple. Lovely. Um, I I spent spent some time in Cork recently actually, and uh, I, I was quite quite um, taken by it. And so were you because you left Longford Town, left Longford Town in their time of need, and jumped ship and went to Cork City when they didn't really need you till next season. <laughs> Well, that, that's that's um, that's one way of putting it. My way of putting it would be that you know I got offered a, an opportunity to to be a full time manager in a in a Premier Division team in the League of Ireland. My old an old club of mine where I had a great time. So um, it was a difficult decision to make. I love my time at Longford, but um, I felt that I only had one one choice really in the end. Yeah, was it a case of if I don't sort of take this now, I might not have it like uh, at the start of next season, or did you feel compelled to um, to grasp that opportunity when it came up at such a big, such a club as big as as Cork City, obviously? Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the, as I've said before, Premier Division jobs don't come around um, that often, and when they do come around, you know, it's it's difficult decision to make. But at the end of the day, I just felt that you know Cork City was a was a great club, a fantastic opportunity for me and. Unfortunately, I couldn't. I couldn't turn it down. Are you still, um, you know, when you look at Longford now and they're they're kind of on the cusp of the playoffs, so you kind of keep them very close to what's going on there. Uh, Dara Doyle is obviously involved, and they're they're getting ready to make a battle to get into the Premier Division. But I guess some of your heart is still there as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, I speak to Dara all the time. Um, always checking up how the boys are doing. It's um, you know he's got a good squad there, and Dara's a very good coach, and um, I'm sure that. He will, he will guide them well into the playoffs and, and I hope they do really well. It's, it's quite staggering though, just looking at the table. Cork City have 30 points from 30 games this season, one point a game, which is an appallingly bad average uh, considering where the club has come from. I, I was at your, the game just when you were about to take over against Galway United when you were poor, but things haven't improved since in, in terms of results. Have you been shocked by um, you know, the start that sort of you've had or, or is it just a rebuilding process? Um, a little bit of both, really. Obviously, the, the results since I've come in have been disappointing. I wouldn't say the performances have been particularly bad. Um, just aspects of our game need to be improved. Um, defending, certainly, and, and not just not just the defenders, but defending as a, as a group. Um, but obviously, the you know the, the, they've had a bad season. The drop off this year has been has been staggering, really. That you know, and, and no one can quite put their finger on it. But yeah, it is it is a little bit of a rebuild as well for next season. It's about getting in there now, seeing who we want to keep. Who we who we can let go, who we need to try and bring up from the from the underage, and and just and try and get the recruitment right for next season. Yeah, because Neil, I understand there's, there's quite a few players out of contract. I mean, at this stage, like what kind of numbers have you got signed up for next year, and, and where do you actually stand with that that rebuild? Um, well, there's there's you know excluding the the kind of under nineteen players, there's three of the present first team squad are under contract, so mm. it's. Um, it's going to take a bit of a job to, to, to get some of those signed back up. Um, I'd like to keep some of them um, and, and then just and go around and try and recruit players like, um, like managers do at this time of year. Mm. Where, where is the confidence in the players as well? Because it was just, um, I, they just to me against Galway anyway, they looked like players that just had kind of lost self-belief. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I wasn't in charge for that game. So um, as far as I can see, it, it was just a poor performance. But, you know, Galway are on a on a bit of a run they're, they're not doing too bad so I think mm. you don't want to be too disrespectful to Galway and say that Cork City should go over there and roll them over because you know Shamrock Rovers found it a very difficult place to go as well and I found it difficult to go this year with my Longford team so it's not an easy place to go but yeah you're right they didn't they didn't play well um, and I don't, I don't know I wasn't at the club then what I've seen um, there's good players there um, it's just it's just trying to put my ideas across and, and, and get my what I want out of the team and, and try and get it all together and gel it all together until the end of the season at least yeah, like how were the morale levels when you went in, Neil? Because, I mean, it is, as you mentioned, the drop-off. I mean, when you, you consider the level that Cork have operated at for the last five, six seasons to challenge the dock every year almost. Um, I mean, did you come into a group where, 
you know, people are sort of the heads were down. I mean, have you seen that in games when you've conceded? I mean, I'm thinking of the Waterford game at home where you're one 0 up, and you sort of end up losing the game two one, and it's a it's a very uncork sort of type of result and, and thing to do at Turner's Cross. I mean, is there some kind of issues with morale there? I think so. I think a little bit. You know, as they say, it's an old saying that winning is a habit, and and so is losing as well. So you know, they, there's no memory of once you get in front to go and win the game and to drive on and keep doing well, but. You know, is confidence low? I would say it is. They haven't. They haven't been getting the results. They've been getting a little bit of um, a little bit of stick from 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 people around the place. So confidence is low. So we're just trying to build that back up again. Um, performances have improved. I felt that we, for most of the game, for the most part, we were we were good against Waterford. It was just um, the goals we conceded really. And, and against Dundalk, we went up there and with a lot of injuries and and and, and give a good show of, of ourselves. So. Confidence is definitely coming back and performances are improving. Have you got a sense from the club of, of I, I suppose, your ability to compete? Because obviously come the, come the winter time now, I mean, it's, it's well known, it's a small market. Dundalk and Shamrock Rovers are in a very strong position to snap up or, or maintain a lot of the better players. I mean, have the club given you an indication of how competitive you can be in that regard? Yeah, I, I, you know we're we're going to be competitive to where where we're going to be. We're not going to be able to compete with the with the Dundalks and the Shamrock Rovers as well in terms of in terms of wages. Um, so that you know we're not going to be up there. But we, we we feel that we can be in and around the kind of next wave of next wave of teams um, and be competitive at that level certainly. Yeah, because there are there are I suppose lots of rumours and you know chat behind the scenes that Cork are facing into a precarious situation next season. How worried are you in terms of the finance? Are you fairly assured that things will be okay? As you say, to battle for something like a European spot. Yeah, I think you know it, this club and, and most clubs in the League of Ireland don't rely on a financial backer, so they're they're reliant on the local community and clubs and uh, uh, and, and spectators and and getting crowds and. Obviously, the crowds are down, and 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 you know they rely on sponsorship as well, which is why this this winner gaff is such an important part for the club. So once you know the, the crowds start picking up, then it, it's hard to tell you what, what the financial position will be in. But we'll be in and around, in and around the, the kind of level that, that we need to be with the likes of the Sligo's, the Bows, the the the, the, the Pats, that kind of that mm. kind of level, I'd say. In terms of players coming through, I just, I just thought it was something that um, maybe under John Caulfield's reign, as successful as it was, it wasn't something that was kind of very regular and that you, all these young players coming through. and you, That must have encouraged you against Dundalk that you had to rely on sort of second string players. But what young players are coming through or how strong is your underage, your 19s or 17s coming up? Well, the 19s are very strong, but as you know, it's... Uh there's a big there's a big gap between the 19s and the, and the first team, especially the Premier Division. So there, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of good crop of young 19s there. Whether they'll be ready for the first team is it too soon for them? Possibly on a couple of them, but there's 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 lads in the in the first team squad at the moment. Alec Byrne, um, Connor McCarthy, Ronan Hurley, um, Dara Crowley have all come from the 19s. Are in the first team squad at the moment. I'm sure I've missed a couple there as well, but um, a couple are injured as well that we've got high hopes for. So next season we will have. Um, a higher proportion of younger players from the 19s and from the and first year pros at the club, uh, mixed in with a, with obviously a couple of older players and a bit more experience. Yeah, I mean Neil, just uh, you were obviously at Cork as a player during some very successful times, and I think it's, uh, you mentioned like why you had to move from Longford, why it was such a big opportunity that you couldn't turn down. That I don't think people sometimes up up here necessarily grasp how big a deal Cork City is down there. But I just wonder when like results, you've maybe had a, a couple of slow results to start off. Um, is it a different experience? Are people stopping you in the street to ask you about things? Is that like something that's very noticeable change from? for this sort of most day-to-day -day responsibility of almost representing the club yeah definitely and it gets a little it takes a little bit of getting used to that wherever you go people want to talk about talk about the club and but when you're doing well that's fine but when you're not doing so well it, it becomes a bit of a burden to you but no everyone would just I think people understand that the position the club are in at the moment the position I'm in and where we want to be so they're being they're being very helpful and very supportive of us at the moment and and and, and really just just trying to see through this season and, and have a rebuild for next season and take it from there and see where we go Troy Parrott in the Spurs squad I believe as well brilliant great news great for Ireland great for Tottenham that they could bring a young player in and it just shows that the belief that Pochettino has in him you know it's a it's a great player and hopefully we'll, we'll see him in a 
a senior team soon. Yeah, you're playing uh, Finn Harps on Friday night just to wrap up, and um, a game that you kind of you don't want to be losing just to stay out of that possibility of getting into the relegation sort of battle. Oh, that's 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 a reality, you know. That's where that's what I'm that's what I'm looking at. We we need to get a result on Friday, 100. percent We we cannot certainly cannot lose it, but we'd like to win it to give ourselves that little bit of distance away from Finn Harps. But yeah, it's definitely a game we need to win, and the the, the club hasn't had a home win in a while, so it's um it's important that we that we do that. Can you actually win this gaff as well, by the way, yourself? Is it like Father Ted, where you know the organisers won the last uh, prize we had? Is that possible, or have Cork looked after your accommodation needs? It, it's, it's, I think they've probably put it as part of my contract that I win it. So um, no, I, 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 I just I just clarify that before you get into anything, you know. <laughs> no, they are looking after me. They are looking after me with a, with a place, a lovely place. So um, I'm yeah, I'm happy about that. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, lads. Pleasure.